Family, welcome to another episode of Financial Freedom. I am your host and accompaniment on this journey, Derek Brown. Look, we are getting into part two of talking about our future in real estate after the pandemic. We have a wonderful expert here with us, uh, Mrs. Elnora M. Linton. She is literally one of the greatest real estate agents of all time. Okay, I'm just I'm just saying, but no, she's seriously though, she's great. A wealth of information. She's here with us. She's actually is uh in in in, in GA where she ranks in the top 20% of 380 agents in the Keller Williams Realty Atlanta Partners in Stockbridge, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Linton, Mrs. Linton. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us and having an extended conversation with me. So this is, yes. is going to be good. <laughs> so, so you left you left us on a lot of cliffhangers last last episode so we we got into loans fha va wnba all these loans <laughs> and, and i didn't know what any of it meant right and then you got in your percentages and what we should have in the bank because i asked you like i knew what i was talking about and then so i'm i need to we need to rewind a little bit and kind of go back because okay. you blew my mind with this thing. so you said I could have a 580 and get an FHA loan at three percent, and I was three and like, percent down. Even even with home buying assistance programs, they want you to have a 640, but you're telling me less than I can still get a loan. So, what's the optimal place for us to be in if if we're trying to get a loan with a low interest rate? Well, what you ideally you would like okay. to have above a 680 credit score because you're going to get the best rate and when you get the better rate then you of course that reduces your, the amount of your monthly uh payment that saves you okay. a lot of money uh an fha loan is three and a half percent down um okay. it is a government-backed loan so um the so but the thing with an fha loan you will have to pay okay. the mortgage insurance throughout the life of the loan. So mm -hmm. unless you actually refinance it and switch loan products, or unless you sell the house or pay it off, that you will have that mortgage insurance. Okay, okay. So let me ask you this, is there, a, I don't know any better, is there a penalty for paying or paying off your mortgage or is it, does it, is it not a good idea? Like I've heard, a, a bevy of information that says don't pay off your mortgage don't pay off your house pay off your house which is which here well um what um there is in most, in most cases no there is no pre prepayment pe penalty but okay. if you're going to pay more than your monthly mortgage payment what mm -hmm. i recommend is that you pay that towards the principal only Mm, and that will save you an in interest. So that's, uh, and we recommend that people pay, you know, try to pay um, uh, one extra payment per year, and which will save you thousands of dollars. Uh, yeah. That is towards the principal only. Another easy way of doing it, uh, rather than, you know, pulling out that lump sum, uh, some mm -hmm. people like to do that at tax time. They say, well, I'll do it at tax time. And tax time comes around, they get that refund. And then, you know, they already spent that on something else. <laughs> it's oh, they're ready to go on vacation, you know, I'm, all of I'm, that I'm, stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm buying a Jaguar next year. Y'all ain't, ain't, <laughs> okay. ain't heard me. Well, don't do it I'm before you buy a house. <laughs> buy your house first. I'll be sleeping in my, I'll be sleeping in my back seat. <laughs> Look, I, then I'll be able to live in there anywhere I want. Um, okay, so let me. Speaking of which, uh, we had some some good stuff come up uh, in between shows. Let me ask you this: How big a deal is location when it comes to buying my house, my condo, whatever it is? How right. big is that? How big a deal is that? That is a big deal uh, because. Um, your what other homes in your area are selling for will directly affect what your house sells for so you know um uh, because an appraiser looks at what has sold in your neighborhood and they compare your square footage and the condition of the home and all of those things 
uh, to what has already sold. And okay. so if the, the houses in your neighborhood are not doing well and you know, you've got the uh, biggest and baddest house in the neighborhood, it could affect your house. Or if so just even if my house on a basis, it just it affects it, what happens, what's happening, how well the neighborhood is maintained, and all of that stuff affects um, the the value of your home. So even if my house is pristine, grass just green, just chilling, just perfect, all the blades just waving hello when I walk past, everything <laughs> is great. But if my neighborhood is bad uh, of the housing. I'm, I'm sorry, the the, the uh, housing in the neighborhood is bad. It's still going to affect my property values. If Fred Sanford is across the street, that's going to affect you. <laughs> what is, is that going to affect my loan? If I if I move in, if I'm looking at moving into a place, and let's say I, I want to buy a home here, and maybe I'm saying, hey, you know, auntie so-and-so, you should buy a home here, it's cheap. Is that going to affect my loan if I move into a neighborhood that's not that great? Yes, but well, because the the amount that the bank is going to uh, loan you is based on the amount that the house the house appraises for. They're not going mm -hmm. to loan you a, a penny more than what it appraises for. So um, yes, but you. when you have when you get that appraisal, then your agent, if the home does not appraise your agent will be able to, um, should be able to uh, go back to that seller's agent, that listing agent and say, look, okay, this didn't appraise and, mm -hmm. um, and it can, you can contest it uh, or that seller may be willing to reduce the price to the appraised value. Or you may want to pay, a lot of people are doing it right now because of the way the market is, pay what is called the appraisal gap, the gap between what it appraised for and the sales price, the, the price that you're under contract for. Wow. Okay. So how do I know the house is, and you kind of mentioned this a little bit before, how do I know the house is appraised fairly? Well, um, your agent will be able to help you with that, but um, it, it it's it's gonna if it's in line with what's going on in the neighborhood then you're fine but if it's a big disparity um that's a red flag so what's the and big i'm disparity? sure some of that is going to... on <laughs> what's, <laughs> so what's the big if disparity a house, if you um uh if a house the house across the street sold for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and the house that you're buying, um, you're under contract for $250,000 and, uh, and it appraises and yours is in as good as or better shape than the one across the street. And they come back with an appraisal of 225 or 200, then, you know, that's, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a huge gap. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not even, I'm not even good at math and that's a huge gap. Okay. <laughs> now so, there may be some differences, a few thousand dollars here and there, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, but if there's a big disparity, then um, then that's that's a concern. Looking at those areas of 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 how you became who you became, and then looking at what were all the influxes that interfered with all of the stuff. We don't like to do that. That's too much work. Sometimes you have to take it in small pieces, in small fragments. You can't just run through it and say, okay, let's merrily, merrily do this work. It'll be fun. No, it's not fun work. It's painful. But we have to do it to get through it. Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. 
thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me ask you this. Like, so, so I'm I'm in Atlanta right now. Um, you've you you're I'm, I'm making Georgia native, from what I know. Yes, Mac Town. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So and so and you do work all over all over Metro Atlanta. So like so like the West End. I moved into the West End actually in 2006 when I first moved down to Atlanta. I came out here for school. Um, it was a very different place then. <laughs> it was a very yes. different place than it is now, right? So, but yes. I had people who actually bought houses in the area because they had forethought or knowledge that, you know, this area was going to improve before it got gentrified, right? What kind of pipelines of information do I need to tap into to know that kind of stuff? Because I remember before that place was built up the way it is now, I remember hearing people buying houses. And I'm like, why are you buying houses? And, in, in the West End, but they knew something I didn't. Where do I find that kind of information from? If I'm looking well, what people were doing at that time, they were, you know, uh, they were talking about the belt line and talking about all of the things that they were going to do. So that comes from the city. So you've got to look okay. at the area and look at what's going on, the city plans, um, uh, what companies are planning to come to the area and all of those kinds of things. And um, and that's what they did. Mm, okay, okay. So I should be keeping my eye out for the papers, for the news I see online, for development. Uh, Absolutely. Like uh, big big companies that may come here, uh, big projects that may come to a certain neighborhood, and I exactly. should plan my purpose around those things. Well, you can, yes. Uh, now, and especially if you're talking about investment property, that's which is a totally okay. different animal. Um, but if you're looking to buy, um, do an owner occupy, you're buying a house to live in. You may mm -hmm. or may not want to do that. You want to do uh, buy that where it's convenient for you and okay. your family. So I know a lot of people are trying to do the whole Airbnb thing. They're doing the you know, they'll sublet their condo or their house or a room or stuff like that. You said that was a whole different animal as a rental property. What what makes it such a different animal? Well, this, see, so you have rental properties and then you have Airbnb. So, okay, um, they're different. yes, yes. Okay. So you have okay. rental properties where people are renting, uh, literally renting a house from someone or renting okay. an apartment from someone. Airbnb, mm -hmm. some people just buy property and it is Airbnb only. Uh, they mm -hmm. have people in and out. The thing about that is you have to be really careful with both of them because before you purchase that property because homeowners associations are starting to crack down on um, Airbnb okay. and on rental properties because um, um, to, in order to maintain the value of the other homes, um, the owner occupied homes in the neighborhood, because they right. don't want to buy a bunch of people in and out of the neighborhood that don't really care about the neighborhood. And then of course, people are renting Airbnbs and they're having big parties and that kind of thing. So yeah, um, a lot of HOAs are, they are uh, not allowing them. Some are not allowing them at all. Some of them mm. are restricting them. So it uh, you have to be careful with that. So <laughs> in your opinion, are HOAs a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it depends. <laughs> they, you see this look on my face, right? So I'm just like, yes, are good? Yes. HOAs can be a good thing. Uh, because, um, you know, it can uh, stop your neighbor from uh, painting their house bright purple or Pepto-Bismol pink and, you know, bringing down your property value. Uh, it can stop them from, you know, uh, dr driving their cars on the front lawn, um, making sure that uh, people maintain their properties, their lawns and, and such. So, um, so in that respect, yes. 
Um, some of them are kind of overreaching. Mm. And um, and some, they, it's just, they're really, really restrictive. So um, it's a crap shoot. <laughs> Because I've just I've heard horror stories, but I mean I I guess yeah. the ones that are really doing their job you don't hear about at all because they're doing their job I guess. Right. right. So you mentioned earlier, and I, and I and I think we mentioned this earlier, the sales history of a house. If a house has been on the market for a while, and and I think you mentioned something about this when it came to the neighborhood too, if the house has been on the market for a while and it it hasn't sold it looks like a decent house but it just hasn't sold or if it's been on the house and you mentioned some of these houses are on the house for weeks and you're getting multiple offers on either days. end of that <laughs> day, days on either end of that spectrum are there red flags well if a house has been on the market for a considerable amount of time time uh particularly in this highly competitive market there's an issue and nine times mm. out of 10, it's overpriced. Ah. Um, yeah. Um, and, um, the seller wants a certain amount and that's what they want. Uh, and they're willing to let it sit there for, where, for whatever reason and not reduce the price. Uh, because most homes right now, if they're in decent shape, um, they're selling pretty quickly. Hmm. So it sounds like the people who are contacting you have a target, like they have a target market that they want. And, and we talked about this before at the beginning of our last episode where, ha, you have to go back and watch it, people. Um, at the beginning of our last episode about the things that people kind of forget to do before they come talk to you. When I come to my realtor, what is the, how do I define my target market? How do I look at myself and go, hey, this is what I need to be getting, or this is what I want to get. What, how do I do that? So what I'm going to do is ask you what it is that you, you want. I, I want to know what, what kind of house you want. You know, do you want land? Do you want something with a small backyard and those kinds of things? Do you want, uh, what things are just a uh, must haves for you? Uh, do you need a bedroom on the main floor, you know, for an, uh, for aging parents that may come to visit and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna ask you those questions and then I'm going to try to match you as close as I possibly can with a house that has as many of those things as possible. Okay. As a realtor, right, who's seen thousands of houses sold, are there any primary staples of a house that maybe an amateur first time home buyer like myself would not know to look for that's going to help my household value? Because you know more than I do when it comes to this type of thing. Like if I say to you, oh, well, I, well, I want this, but you know, this thing over here doesn't help at all with the home. Is there anything that people have asked for? And this may sound weird, but I figure why not? Uh, has, are there anything that people have asked for that actually brings down the value of a house? Well, um, say for instance, if it's a four bedroom house and you convert it to a three bedroom house, that mm -hmm. could affect the value. Okay. You know, uh, when you get ready to sell it, but if that's what you need for your family, um, you know, then, then that's fine but those things like that uh and if you go and do something really crazy in the yard and those kinds of things uh <laughs> um, okay. yeah crazy paint colors um you know all oh. things <laughs> let me ask you this and this is this is this is one thing i was kind of surprised about when i was reading for this a little bit do they still use lead and paint no no uh, that not in the state of Georgia. Now there are some homes that in Georgia that still uh, may That's have them that were home. built before 1978. Uh, okay. There are some, but most most of the time you're not going to find any. Uh, but now anything that was built after 1978, because it was gotcha. banned. Thank Because I was I was looking at that. I, I was reading about asbestos and I was looking at lead and paint. I'm like, people people still use that but it was still a question that people thought it was relevant to ask 
Um, right. So now that we've discussed that, so if we decrease the, the amount of bedrooms or, or the overall space in the house for whatever reason, um, that could decrease the property value. So right. when it comes to what the next person wants, you know, got you. So when it comes to the property itself, what are some of the costs that the, the, uh, the potential buyers are going to have to absorb to maintain that property that we don't think about people like me don't think about when they're looking for a house. Right, right. So you're going to need your, uh, you're not required to get an inspection, but um, I highly recommend that everyone get a home inspection before you buy a property. Um, okay. And you will have to, uh, if you are getting a loan, you are required to get an appraisal. That home inspection okay. is going to cost you anywhere from, I'd say from about uh, maybe 300 to about 475, depending, they base it on the square footage of the house. So it all depends on the size of the house. Um, okay. The, your um, appraisal is going to cost you probably between four and 500. Um, okay. And those are um, upfront, those are your upfront fees. Uh, and then of course, at closing, then uh, your down payment and your closing costs. Um, okay. And then you've got, uh, you know, prepaids with uh, on insurance and things of that nature. So uh, your homeowner's insurance. Now your homeowner's insurance and your taxes, that is held in escrow and then you have to pay that. Uh, you mm -hmm. pay, that's part of your monthly payment. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jermaine Dolly, Mr. Hello Dolly himself. And guess what? You're tuned in to Team Worship with my homies, me and Corey. Keep it like, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Candy West, and you're watching Tea and Worship with Mignon and Corey. It's your boy, James Fortune, and you are watching my favorite news show, Tea and Worship, with my sis, Mignon, and Corey. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. but I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. Have you seen more people now trying to do wills and, 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 and estates planning uh, now that we've gone through, are uh, still going through the COVID-19 phase of our lives? I've seen a lot more people trying to do that, to, to have wills, to have health care directed, to um, even to the point of having living trust. For example, a will goes through probate, so it's public knowledge. The trusts are not public knowledge, so families are really starting to take a hard look at what if I'm incapacitated. One thing you mentioned, and, I, and I've heard this before, and, and this seems to be the common consensus, but I've, I've, I've heard a you know, debate on both sides about whether or not, with all those fees you just mentioned, right? Those are just kind of coming in the door. Um, but when it gets down into it, people who are paying more in rent than some people are paying in mortgage. And you even mentioned, even with, with homeowner's insurance and certain, certain maintenance issues, people are still paying less in their mortgage. Would you argue that 
buying a house juxtaposed with buying a condo or ultimately if, if let's say i just wasn't comfortable i wasn't sure if a condo or a house was better off for me and i cited a reason i said uh well condos may not require as much maintenance as a house does would i have any validity in that or would it be still true that a standalone house might be would be better better investment well, a condo may not require as much maintenance, but you're going to pay for it because you got a, a maintenance, a monthly maintenance fee with that condo. So it all depends mm -hmm. on how much that fee is. And that can uh -huh. affect how much loan you qualify for as well. Okay. See, I, so, I never even knew that there was a maintenance fee associated with a condo. <laughs> So, so hold on. So what are the other fees? Are the fees to get into a condo the same as to get into a house? No, they're very different. Very different. Because see, in the um with the condo, <laughs> you have to pay for all of those all of those uh common areas uh in that with that condo. Um uh, the roof still has to be maintained, the exterior of the condo has to be maintained. The gym that everybody loves. Oh, I want to stay here and I can go downstairs and go to the gym and, you know, all right. of that stuff. So you have to pay for that. The hallways, okay. um, the landscaping and all of that stuff. So those fees, so it really depends on um, uh, that condo association uh, or townhome association uh, that they determine what that fee is. And some of them can be really expensive. Uh, and if, really it's, if it's gated, you know, that security gate to get in. Um, and so, you know, it, it can be really expensive. Vary from, oh gosh, a few hundred dollars a year to a few thousand dollars a year. Ain't that nice. Mm -mm. <laughs> so, so <clears throat> would, would you, if, if would you go with a, with a, if you had to choose house, fully laid out condo, same amount of space, you would go with the house. Well, I'm a country girl. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I would rather not have anybody, you know, and, and I've done that, been there, done that. I lived in New York city for a while and, oh, in oh, an okay. yeah, you and it. so, okay. um, I knew then that that was not for me. Um, mm. um, I, I don't like, necessarily like having people that many people near me that near me so mm -hmm. um uh that's uh so it's really a personal decision got you got you where in there right it's a personal decision but it's also a financial one absolutely absolutely where in there does my personal decision hit my finances and go okay well i want this but this is what I can afford. Where, where should my personal hit my financial? When you talk to that mortgage uh, lender. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk to them, they tell you you broke. That's what. Right. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Fitch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Lee. Go ahead. <laughs> when you talk to that mortgage lender and you look at your bank account and says, okay, <laughs> okay yeah, this do. is what I want. <laughs> but okay. this is what I can afford. And then we try mm. to find your happy medium. Got you. So it's about being able to find a happy medium. Let me ask you this, because I, 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 I've known people who are looking for houses and they're often afraid to actually tell the person all they want, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I, I heard you say more than once, tell me what you want and I'll try yes. and get as close to that as possible. I yes. am heavily a needs person. I guess I'm a stereotypical guy in that, in that regard. I just need what I need. I don't need a whole bunch of what I want. I just need what I need. But I should come to you and I should tell you, this is what I want. And, you know, if you could sprinkle in a little bit of what I need and what I need and fine. But I should give you my dream house. Or right. if I say, hey, right. I want to do a rental property, I should lay that out for you and let you do your job. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, and then I'm going to tell you if it's realistic or not. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to show you what is available in your price range. And okay. so, and so then we have a choice, you know, we either up it or we, uh, you know, we do what we have to do. Uh, but, uh, but 
uh, sometimes people are not realistic in what they think they can get for that amount of money. Mm. Okay. And then sometimes, a lot of times, people think uh, that they don't qualify for as much as they do. They qualify for a lot more than they think they do. So if you qualify, okay, so let me ask this question then. If I qualify for more than I thought I did, where should I draw the cap? Because I'm guessing I shouldn't go right up to the limit. I should stop at a place that will allow me to comfortably deal with whatever costs come associated with this, correct? Absolutely. You want to look at your budget and your lifestyle and the other th the things that you want to do the way, you know, if you're a homebody and you don't really like to go out to eat a lot and travel a lot and all of that stuff. So you, you may want to put more money into your house. Um, but, uh, but somebody that is out and about and, and likes to travel and all this, you do, you want to consider your budget. And, um, you know, the, the kind of your lifestyle and the things that you want to do. Okay. And make okay. sure that, make sure that your mortgage, you, you leave room for not only the things that you want to do, but then those maintenance issues that are bound to happen. Right. You know, because there's right. always something that needs to be done in a house, you know. One more question. And I think, I think we're going to be running out of time on that. What does the material that the house is made of or apartment is made of or condo is made of, does that impact the price of the house? The reason I ask is because in this pandemic, so many people are on Wi-Fi. So many people are using virtual services. And I, I've had more than one conversation with somebody who goes, I have no reception in my house. None whatsoever. Yes, yes. How is, do you find that as your people are looking for houses, that's a huge thing for them right now, especially with Absolutely. all the houses being packed up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, fortunately, uh, a lot of the newer homes uh, are not having that problem. But then you've got some areas, um, at, particularly in some of the suburbs and the new uh, the communities, they just haven't, in, in the smaller uh, suburbs, they don't have it yet. And so they, there was an issue. Um, and uh, so uh, that is something that before we sign on that dotted line, that's, that's something that needs to be investigated. Okay, got you. Thank you so much for your time, Mrs. Linton. You're I'm gonna, welcome. I'm, I'm gonna come look for you myself because I may have questions. <laughs> Please I <don't>. do. Um, <laughs> but tell us where we can find you at if we got questions. And, and and we just, we, we love this some Mrs. Linton. So we trying to come ask some more questions. So where do we find okay. you at? You can find me at elnora.godormteam.com. And uh, my number, I don't mind giving you my number. You can reach me at 404-861-2629. That's 404-861-2629. That's correct. Well, all of our viewers have it, including me, because I, I I do not mind asking questions to my I'm blue in the face. So thank you so <laughs> much. Do. I, I know your time is valuable. So thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Mrs. Elnora M. Linton, our real estate professional expert. Thank you for joining us this evening or today on Financial Freedom. As always, please be safe out there. It was a pleasure having you. Be well.